Chapter Four of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Love of Improvement. I have already said that you are capable of never-ending progress in knowledge and education, and that it is alike your interest and your duty to aspire to that perfection for which God has given you capabilities. The object of the present chapter is to kindle within you a desire to make progress in everything you do to go on as the scripture expresses it to perfection whatever is worth doing is worth doing well is an old but true maxim more than even this might be affirmed whatever is worth doing at all is worth doing in the best possible manner no matter how well you have done the same thing heretofore no matter how much more perfectly you already do it than your neighbours you are not to make the past of your own experience or the present of your neighbours the measure of your conduct the question is, how well can I perform this particular act now? Perhaps no person who reads these paragraphs will doubt the truth of the general principle I have laid down. Thus far, it may be said, all seems to be correct. We are indeed bound to do everything we do to the glory of God, and He can hardly be glorified in the doing of a thing in a manner which is short the best in our power. Yet when we come to apply the principle and say in what particulars we should strive to make progress and do better from day to day and from hour to hour if the thing is to be performed so often many an individual will be found i fear to stand back and among those who thus shrink from the just application of admitted principle will be found not a few who till now suppose they had within them a strong desire for perpetual improvement it is my young friends no trifling matter to have burning within a hearty desire for eternal progress it is no small thing to do whatever our hands find to do which is fit that an intelligent being one who belongs to the family of christ should do in such a manner that it will contribute to the glory of god and the good of mankind and yet less than this as christians or even rational and immortal beings we cannot do i know indeed that many who profess to be the disciples of christ actually do less than this I know there are hundreds and thousands who are called by his worthy name, and who seem to be almost above the liability to do that which could be regarded as positively wrong, who nevertheless are very far from striving to do everything which their hands find to do with all their might, or, in other words, as well as they possibly can. But it is to be hoped that the standard of Christian character will ere long be much higher than it is now it is of far less consequence what we do in the world my young friends than how well we do it there is hardly a useful occupation among us in which a person may not be eminently serviceable to himself and to mankind there is hardly one in which we may not constantly improve ourselves there is hardly one which will not afford us the means and opportunities of improving others there is hardly an occupation which may not itself be essentially improved i do not mean to say there is no choice in occupations as either regards pleasantness or usefulness nor do i mean to say that neither parents themselves nor their children are ever to consult their own natural preferences their own likes and dislikes all i aim at is to convince the young especially the young woman that the old couplet honour and shame from no condition rise act well your part that all the honour lies is not so very far from the truth as many suppose and that happiness even usefulness and excellence are as little dependent on place and condition as honour and shame a mercantile man with whom i was once acquainted gave me in few words a very important lesson he said he made it the rule of his life to do in the best possible manner whatever at any time seemed as a subject of duty to devolve upon him no matter about his own likes or dislikes what appeared to be in the course of the dispensations of providence allotted him for the day he performed with all his heart if he should conclude to pursue his present business for life as the means of procuring a livelihood this would be the very best course on preparation if otherwise it was the best under the circumstances and especially it was the best state of mental and moral discipline with which he could be furnished to neglect the business before us because we are unhappy in it 
or at least not so happy as we fancy we might be in some other employment is to oppose the plans of providence nay even to defeat our own purpose it is to disqualify ourselves as fast as we can for faithfulness and consequently for usefulness in the employment we desire should we ever attain to it the wisest course is to do what our hands find before them to do provided it is lawful to do at all with all our might the best possible preparation a young woman can have for a sphere of action more congenial to her present feelings is the one she now occupies she has at least duties to herself to perform let these as they recur be performed in the best possible manner and let the utmost effort always be made to perform everything a little better than she ever performed it before if it be but the washing of a few cups or the making of a bed whatever her personal duties are generally need not now be said first because many of them are obvious secondly because they will be treated of in their respective places but it should ever be borne in mind that there is nothing ever so trifling which is worth doing at all that may not be done better and better at every repetition of the act and that there is no occupation which may not in itself be improved indefinitely rising in the morning devotion personal ablutions dressing breakfasting exercise employments recreation dining conversation reading reflections all these and a thousand other things which every one as a general rule attends to may be performed in a manner to correspond more and more with the scripture direction which has been illustrated there are in respect to what i am now mentioning two classes of persons in the world females as well as males and they differ from each other as widely almost as the world of happiness from the world of misery one of these classes lives to receive is selfish supremely so the other lives to communicate more or less to do good to make the world around it better the last class is benevolent a person of either class is not necessarily indolent or inactive but the end and aim of the labours of one are herself while the other labours for god and mankind the one procures honey from every flower formed by our hands but not a flower does she ever raise by the labour of her own hands if she can possibly avoid it the one lives only to enjoy the other to be the continual cause of joy like her creator the latter has a source of happiness within the former depends for happiness on others leave her alone or amid a frowning or even an indifferent world and she is miserable would that i could reach the ears of that numerous class who are dependent on the world around them for their happiness who never originated any good and are becoming more and more useless every day would that i could make them believe that true happiness is not to be found externally unless it first exists in their own bosoms would that i could convince them that the royal road to happiness if there be one is that which has been alluded to in the preceding paragraphs in making all persons and things around us better transmuting as it were under the influence of the gospel all coarser things around us to apples of gold in pitches of silver i long exceedingly to see our young women filled with the desire of improvement physical social intellectual and moral i long to see their souls glowing with the desire to go about doing good like the lord and master not indeed literally as i shall have occasion to say in another place but i long to have their hearts expand to overflowing with love to the world for whom christ died and i wish to have some of the tears of their compassion fall on those over whom god has given them an amazing and often an unlimited influence could i hope to reach a dozen minds and warm a dozen hearts which had otherwise remained congealed or at most received passively the little stream of happiness which a naked external world affords them without any corresponding efforts to form a world of their own could i be the means of enkindling in them that love for everlasting progress towards perfection which is so essential to the world's true happiness and their own could i thus aid in setting in motion an undercurrent which should in due time restore us to eden in all its primitive unfallen beauty and excellence how should i be repaid for these labours i will dare to hope for the best if i have the sacred fire burning in my own bosom i will hope to be the means and kindling it in the bosom of a few readers if my own soul glows with love to a fallen world i will dare to hope that a few at least of those souls who are more particularly made for love and sympathy will be led to the same source of blessedness 
End of chapter four.